Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I am in a Tesla Model 3. I'm going on a road trip. You can follow along with the road trip up here in the corner where I am going to Yellowstone on my RV channel. It's gonna be an interesting trip. I decided instead of taking the big white beast of a truck that gets 11 point something miles per gallon, currently working on that, or the big red truck, which gets I hope 17. I've, I've always been afraid to check, but the white truck tells me on the dashboard. I decided I was going to rent this Model 3 and play with the enemy for a little bit. Figure out what electric car life is all about. So I am at a park near Monticello, Minnesota, and I got a radio to play with because I want to do some APRS stuff while I am on the trip. Let's get after it. So today we have the Vero VRN76. This radio has the ability to Bluetooth to my cell phone and it has the ability to do APRS, digipeating and eye gating. And I figured this would be a good match for the trip. We played around with it a little bit in a previous video and now I want to play around with it some more. So let's get it open. Oh, and I'm trying to get a red one. I keep asking my vendor contact to send me a red one. You can get this thing in like eight or nine different colors. They are all pretty awesome. I keep hoping for a red one. I don't have the ability to say which one I want. Maybe. Uh, oh, it's got a little gold sticker on it. I don't know. This isn't gold. This is coyote. Look at this thing. Oh, that is super tactical. Wait, wait. Don't yell at me. No, don't yell at me. Ah, got it. All right, so the cool part about this for a road trip is that it is, where is it? It is USB type C chargeable. And what better way to keep your radio charged than to use USB-C and your car charger that you already use for your phone and for everything else in your life. Let's get this thing powered on. And in order to do that, it has a little battery protector. So I gotta peel that off or else it will not power on. And uh, yeah, Coyote, tactical. And because this is in a car, the other thing that I have is a car antenna and a piece of coax from the car. So we're gonna do that too. I need a BNC to SMA adapter, which is on there. There will be a link in the description down below for that. And then we need to turn this on. And there she is. One, four, four. Oh, no, we're in channel mode. So let's hold down the star key to get out of channel mode. One forty four three ninety is APRS mode and the rest is on the phone. And then there is the antenna. I did a video on this antenna before as well, and it just clips on right over the window and has a little BNC cable that goes through the window weather stripping, and I'm running the super elastic signal stick. All right, now the radio wants me to pair with it. So detected new device, do you want to link now? And yes, I do. Yep, I want to pair, and we are good to go. Settings, ID signaling, identification is TO. Send my location, allow position check. Send my location, allow position check. Automatically share location every five minutes. Use APRS format done, APRS settings. Password is correct, because I typed it in before. Let's do a different ID for this. Let's do 12, T for Tesla, I don't know. I mean, come up with a number. It doesn't really matter which number, as long as you know what it's for. There are some predefined things that are important, but so radio to internet is fine. Internet to radio, I don't need that. Receive messages via the internet. Sure, let's let's experiment with that for a minute. Auto share location over the internet. Let's do five minutes again. Icon, let's do lightning bolt. Send voltage. And I'm not gonna send the operating frequency because I'm busy driving. And then we're on the map and we know. Oh, we need to change power settings too. Menu, radio settings, power, high, okay. We'll see if that works. So yesterday I was playing around with this radio a bit and I was, there's some APRS, that's reception. I was doing some APRS stuff and I think all of my APRS beacons came from the phone down there over the internet, which is fine, but not what I wanted to do. I wanted to RF. So let's go into radio settings. I think it's in radio settings. Nope. Let's go into general settings. And there's this APRS settings thing, which that's all right, that's all good. But then there's this digital mode that isn't actually turned on. So now we've got that on, share location, and we'll share it every, that's reception, share it every minute, and we'll use the APRS format, and those are all of your settings there. That might have been it. Yeah, right, and then we'll set that there in the nice convenient spot for the Tesla. 
those are actually QI charging, inductive charging. The, the radio doesn't have inductive charging. That's the, the next big thing to come out. And then my cell phone is currently charging over there. Two days later. This little guy has been going really good for the past couple of days. We are at 6% charge on the battery and it has been transmitting all day yesterday and most of today. If you look on APRS.FI, the call sign is KM9G-12. If you see lots of rapid little dots, that's when I'm using the cell phone app. And I think, I gotta prove this when I get back to the workbench, but I think that the cell phone app understands that it's connected to the cell phone. Therefore, it doesn't waste your radio's battery by sending APRS packets over RF. It sends them over TCP via the cell phone instead. So yesterday I disconnected the cell phone entirely and just let it run on its own. There's some configuration changes that need to be made in order to make that happen, I think. And I made them and it works. So I'm feeling like I'm on the right track there. It's interesting, might be a useful feature, might be a little bit weird. I have it set to beacon every minute and I don't hear the radio going crazy every minute. So I think when it beacons out, it is muted. I have the digital mute turned off, but it is still muted. When it receives my packet back is when I hear it over the air. So like I'll send it out, I'll get the acknowledgement from the nearby iGate or DigiPeter, and then I will hear that. You can see on the map that I am getting picked up over RF, which is pretty cool because I'm in the middle of nowhere in North Dakota and Montana when this is happening. So I'm gonna keep running it over RF and we're gonna let the battery die and then we'll charge it up via USB-C on the car cell phone charger because that's the awesome part about USB-C. That's why it is needed. It doesn't appear that any alerts pop up on the phone when I receive random inbound APRS messages. You can find this radio in your favorite color using the link in the description down below. Stay tuned for more updates because I've got some more stuff to do with this radio. It's got a lot of features. I'm having a lot of fun with this thing. Perfect bang for the buck, I think. Well, it looks like we made it to the campsite. Campsite's pretty cramped, not gonna lie. I think it was a tent campsite and then they just decided to upgrade it and allow RVs to come in here and stay. So there's this big monster RV that I'm staying in, in this little tiny tent camping area. Oh well, it's good to be here. Views are fantastic. And if you wanna see more views and more, fantax more fantasticness, if you wanna see more views and more fantasticness, check out the video on my RV channel of the Yellowstone trip. One thing that I noticed is when you are plugged into USB charging, the little light comes on to tell you that you're charging, but the fuel gauge up here in the corner doesn't say anything one way or the other. So for a minute there, I thought I had a bad USB charger or a bad cable or a bad battery bank or something, but it was just the nature of the beast. So when that light turns green, you're fully charged. When it's red, you're charging. And when it's nothing like it is now, well, you're nothing. So APRS stuff on this is pretty cool. If you are on the radio only and you are looking at the arrow pad, you can push the left arrow and it will give you up-to-date information of the last few signals that have come in. I have erased all of those because I turned it off and they disappear. And then if you push the right arrow key, you'll get your compass and you can get some more information. Overall, I think this is probably one of the better radios that you can get for the price tag. This thing is around 180 bucks on Amazon. There is a link in the description down below with a discount code for you. And there's also a way to get it right off of their website. It is waterproof, dustproof. It connects to your phone for programming. It has a external cable connector so you can plug in, you know, your phone to do WinLink or something along those lines with a digi rig. We'll be doing that in an upcoming video. I'm going to take some time in an upcoming video and have this thing on the bench in the workshop where I have my 705 and Craig KM6LYW's digi rig set up, not digi rig, DigiPi set up so that we can send APRS messages back and forth and we can see that in real time and what that looks like. However, the trip worked out really well. The phone app is fantastic and if you are on the phone it looks like it takes priority and just sends everything out over the phone's internet connection instead of sending it out over the radio's RF connection. So for the second half of the journey I took the phone app and turned it off and allowed the radio to do radio type stuff and I was actually really surprised so I got to do some digging on that. Either way there is a video right here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.